This is a presentation for EN2LV Lyric Voices on the Christian year, feast days and festivals. Clocks and watch technology developed over the course of the Middle Ages. At the start of our period in 1340, most English villages would have had one clock with a bell that told the hours or called to church services. Towns would have had more, some ringing for the times of church services, some ringing the hours of the day. So many people measured time by the bells calling to church services rather than the standard hours. They would think of the day in terms of matins and vespers. By the end of the 16th century, watches were expensive accessories that many people had, and time was more usually measured by the clock. Before printed calendars made it easy for people to keep track of dates, they used church festivals as a way to plan the year. Particular days were assigned to particular saints as their feast days, the days on which their lives would be remembered and retold. These feast days also became associated with annual events that everyone needed to plan for. Rents were due on the quarter days, for example. These were Michaelmas, the feast day of St Michael, on the 29th of September. Lady Day, the feast of the Annunciation, on the 25th of March. Midsummer Day, the feast of St John the Baptist, on June 24th. And Christmas Day, on the 25th of December. Other feast days became important because they marked important points in the agricultural year. Halloween, All Hallows' Eve, the evening before the Feast of All Saints on October 31st, borrows elements from the Celtic festival of Beltane in its use of bonfires and its association with ghosts and the dead. But it also marks the end of the growing season, when grazing animals needed to be taken indoors. The Feast of St Martin, Martinmas, on November the 11th, was the traditional date for killing animals whose meat would be used for winter food. For much of our period, a bad harvest caused real hardship for poor people. The church had periods of fasting when everyone was forbidden certain foods, especially meat, and periods of feasting when the rich were encouraged to share with their poorer neighbours. The most important periods of fasting were Lent, the seven weeks before Easter, and Advent, the four weeks before Christmas. The day before Lent began was a time for using up all the fresh foodstuffs that could not be used in the next seven weeks. Pancakes used eggs, which were considered a kind of meat in some places and so often banned during Lent. So pancakes were a traditional pre-Lenten treat. Celebrations of other kinds were banned during Lent, such as weddings, parades, music and dancing. So Mardi Gras, or Fat Tuesday, became associated with unruly celebrations. Ash Wednesday was the first day of Lent, and so the church services and rituals associated with this day were very solemn. Jesus' 40-day fast in the desert was remembered. At church services, priests used ashes to make a cross sign on everyone's forehead, and the priest would say, Remember man you are but dust, and unto dust you shall return. Ash Wednesday was associated with remembering human weakness and mortality. The last of the seven weeks of Lent remembered the events that led up to Jesus' death. The services and rituals associated with this time reenact those events to some extent, as if present time was being mapped onto the historical events. This was called recapitulation. So, creeping to the cross on Good Friday involved moving on your knees up the church aisle to kiss a wooden cross, a kind of reenactment of Jesus carrying his cross to the place of crucifixion. Many poems and songs of the period use the same technique of recapitulation, collapsing the distance in time between the events of the poem and the events being remembered. The days of Holy Week were associated with the events leading up to and after Jesus' death. Spy Wednesday remembered the day that Jesus was betrayed by Judas, who had been one of his followers. Monday Thursday was the day when Jesus shared a Passover meal, his last supper with his friends. It was on this occasion that the sacrament of the Eucharist was instituted by Jesus. There will be more details on this in the rituals and sacraments presentation. Good Friday was a day of solemn fasting when Jesus' death was remembered. Holy Saturday was the day that Jesus lay in the tomb. The evening of that day marks the end of Lent. 
Easter Sunday is considered the most important feast day in the Christian Church's year, and the services for this day stress joy at Jesus rising from the dead. Jesus' resurrection makes it possible for human beings to get to heaven, so his resurrection is also a celebration of Jesus as humanity's saviour. Sun imagery is very common to the iconography of Easter, which always happens sometime after the vernal equinox. The sun was said to dance for joy on this morning. The morning of Easter Sunday was the traditional high point of the feast day and most important services happened before noon. Puns on the Son of God and the sun rising were often used. Yellow or gold as the colour of joy um, and the sun were also associated with the festival of Easter. Eggs represent new life and are now very much associated with Easter. This wasn't as common in the earlier period. Lambs were commonly used to represent the risen Jesus. The Paschal Lamb, the Easter Lamb, is a very complex metaphor. It brings together the idea of a sacrificial animal acting as a scapegoat, taking our sins on itself and in its dying therefore removing our sins, with the lamb eaten at the Jewish Passover feast. Jesus was spoken of as the Paschal Lamb. He had taken away our sins and helped us escape death in the same way that God helped the Israelites escape from Egyptian slavery, the event commemorated at the Passover. Advent was a four-week fasting period before Christmas. As with Lent, meat was not allowed, nor was rich food. Advent took place during winter, and winter was a time of food shortages anyway. This fast period may have helped to sustain food resources. But the weather was usually cold, and it was a season associated with hardship and waiting for the seasons to turn. Christmas Day marks the Feast of the Nativity, the day the Church celebrates the birth of Jesus. The date was chosen in the early years of Christianity to coincide with the Roman Saturnalia, a festival associated with gift-giving. As Christianity spread, it added other elements to the celebration of Christmas. The use of evergreen and the Yule log from Germanic Yule celebrations, mistletoe from Celtic paganism, and the association of hope and light that the winter solstice brings for anyone living above 60 degrees latitude. As a break from winter food rationing, feasts were allowed for the 12 days of Christmas. The story of the Nativity told in the Bible says that Mary and Joseph travelled to Bethlehem. They couldn't find room in an inn, so the child was born in a stable. Angels appeared to shepherds nearby, singing Hosanna in excelsis, Hosanna in the highest, and told them to go and visit the child. A star appeared in the east and guided three wise men to the baby. They met King Herod, who was jealous of this new king, and so ordered all the children under two in his kingdom to be killed. Jesus escaped this massacre of the innocents, because an angel warned Joseph and their family escaped to Egypt. To this story, local details were often added. The scene is usually depicted with snow, a familiar feature of Northern European winters. The same te technique of recapitulation where things happening now and things that happened then are combined, is often used in depictions of the Nativity and the story of Jesus' birth. There were 12 days to the Christmas festivities and feast days. December 26th is the Feast of St. Stephen, the first Christian martyr. January 6th is the Epiphany, the Manifestation. This celebrates the arrival of the three wise men from the East to see Jesus. This marks the end of the 12 days of the Christmas season. But the Christmas season of feasts and celebrations might also be continued until Candlemas, February the 2nd, which celebrates the purification of Mary and the presentation of Jesus at the temple, as the Jewish law required. Feasting was less pronounced in this extended period. For further reading on medieval religious celebrations and feast days and fasting, please consult your reading list. For other resources on medieval and early modern religion, please see the video resources available on Blackboard.